There are nights when the wolves are silent and only the moon howls. George Carlin. Nice opening quote to think about as we launch into this module on planets. Go backwards. So the question that we'll want to answer in this module is why were the planetary motions so difficult to explain? So the motion of the planets posed an ancient mystery that played a key role in the development of modern civilization. And that's why, since you've been a child in kindergarten, it has been ground into your head that the Earth goes around the sun, because that is not obvious. And it created um, quite a cultural and intellectual revolution um, over the course of modern civilization. So like the other celestial objects uh, that are painted like sticky dots on that celestial sphere, the planets move, appear to move from east to west every day. And like the sun, superimposed on this east to west motion, is a general shift of about one degree per day, um, a slow eastward drift relative to the background stars. That's all fine. but. The planet's eastward motion drift occasionally would slow, stop, and reverse itself. <laughs> and so for a while, the planets appear to be going backwards against the background stars. And after a while, they reverse their direction once again, and then they continue moving on their driftward toward the east. That is shown in the image of the presentation where you're taking a look at four different epochs. This is taken in Babylonian times when people are trying to figure out how, how planets were moving. And you can see that this retrograde motion, that's what this is called, this backward motion, um, is not always the same. Sometimes the loops are big, sometimes they're skinny ellipses, sometimes they almost seem like they're straight lines. So they come in a variety of shapes, this path that, for example, Mars would carve out um, as it goes over the course of the year. Even more bizarrely was not only do the planets go backwards, but when they go backwards, they're brighter than they are normally when they're going forward. Oh my gosh, what a mystery. So we've got planets going backwards and they're brighter when they go backwards. What could be causing that? So retrograde motion was, was hard to, to grasp in an Earth-centered universe. Um, uh, on what would possibly make the planets go backwards when everything travels in perfect circles around the Earth. As hard as that may be to do, the Babylonians, and in particular the Greeks, um, came up with some very clever ways on how to explain it. And we'll take a look at some of those explanations. Um, they were complex. You can get a sense of that complexity by the image shown here on the image, which is showing the um, orbits of Venus and the orbits of Mars as they were calculated in an Earth-centric or geocentric model. Ultimately, they were wrong, and that's okay, uh, because it's part of the learning journey of how we do science. In contrast, I'm going to tell you what the answer is for retrograde motion. In, in, in a, sun-centered universe in a heliocentric universe, the reason the planets go backwards is because it's just one planet passing another as it goes around on its racetrack around the sun. You're already familiar with this. Drive down the highway. And if you're in the fast lane and the highway, it looks to you as you're passing somebody in the third lane like they're going backwards. They're not going backwards. They're still going forward, but you're going faster than they are. So it looks to you like they're going backwards. And the same thing happens as the planets run around their racetracks around the sun. So for example, Earth is closer to the sun, so it goes around faster than Mars does. And so when we pass Mars on our inner track, it makes it look like, against the background stars, that Mars is going backwards. So that retrograde motion is only an illusion. It's not real as imagined in the geocentric model and the heliocentric model of the Greeks. <clears throat> and here's the extra bonus. The reason that the planet is brighter when undergoing retrograde motion is because Earth and Mars are closer together. In other words, Mars is closer 
um, to the Earth. And that makes sense because they're both going on on their racetrack and as Earth comes around its racetrack, it's actually closer to Mars before it loops around and gets farther away again. So it has a very natural explanation uh, of why the planets appear brighter when they are going backwards, when they are going um, in retrograde motion. So if retrograde motion is so readily explained by having the Earth orbit the Sun, why wasn't this idea accepted in ancient times? I mean, the ancient Babylonians and the ancient Greeks were just as bright as we are today. They were not dummies. And in fact, the idea that the Earth would first go around the Sun instead of uh, the Earth at the center was proposed in 260 BC by the Greek astronomer uh, Aristarchus. And his contemporaries rejected the idea uh, and a sun-centered solar system did not gain eventual acceptance until some 1,700 years later during the Renaissance. And although there were many reasons why the Greeks were reluctant to abandon an Earth-centered universe, and there were philosophical and psychological reasons associated with that as well, the most important physical reason was that their inability to detect something known as parallax. We know what parallax is. Our brains intrinsically know what parallax is. That's how we get depth perception. And so here's the experiment I want you to do. I want you to do it while you're doing it. I want you to take your finger and I want you to hold it out uh, in front of you and I want you to look at some distant object. It could be a volcano, for example, in the image shown here, or it could be a distant tree, a mountain, it doesn't matter. Hold your finger out and then close one eye. So take a look at it like I'm doing here. Hold it with your left and now switch from your left eye to your right eye. Ooh finger jumped, go back and forth, and you will watch your finger jump back and forth as you shift viewing positions between left and right. That's parallax. It's that apparent shift in the angle due to your viewing position. And so our brain takes care for us automatically because we have two viewing positions, our left eye and our right eye, and our brain takes that little bit of angle difference and it's what gives us that sense of what depth is. It's how we determine the depth perception. And so that's what parallax is on an everyday time scale. When you relate this to astronomy, what the Greeks were looking at, you can take a look at the stars in, say, January, that's your left eye. You can take a look at the stars again in July, that's your right eye. So you're separating by six months and you take a look at the different star fields um, and see if you can detect uh, any difference from the left eye to the right eye. The ancient Greeks looked for this but did not find any stellar parallax. And therefore, that left one of two conclusions. That either the Earth is at the center, it is not orbiting anything, or that the distance that the Earth would travel around the Sun is super small compared to the huge distances out to the rest of the stars on the celestial sphere. So they couldn't quite imagine that the stars were that far away. And so that left only one explanation. If you do not detect stellar parallax, which they did not, that the only logical conclusion left was that the Earth was at the center of the universe. And as I mentioned, there were, there were other philosophical and psychological reasons for preferring the Earth at the center. Um, and so they rejected the answer originally proposed in 260 BC that it was the Earth that went around the sun instead of vice versa. Today, we can detect stellar parallax with telescopes, and this is what provides direct proof that the Earth goes around the sun and not vice versa. And that revelation that you could detect parallax, and hence it was the Earth that was moving around the sun, is again why that is driven into your head since childhood that it's the Earth that goes around the sun.